Hey guys, and welcome to the 85th episode of Edu All Stars. My name is Todd Nesloni, and you can find me on Twitter at TechNinja Todd. My name is Chris Kessler. You can find me on Twitter at I am Kessler. I just want to welcome everyone back to the podcast. As you listen to this week's episode, we encourage you to tweet out using hashtag EduAllStars, and then we love seeing those conversations and hearing about the things that kind of stick out to you from the conversation. And we are very excited to welcome this week's guest. It is Colby Sharp. He is a third grade teacher at Parma Elementary in Parma, Michigan, the co-founder of the Nerdy Book Club and a co-founder of Nerd Camp in Michigan. He also co-hosts the monthly Twitter chats, Sharp Shoe and Title Talk. Colby, thanks for coming on with us today. Man, thanks for having me, guys. It's an honor. So, Colby, the best place we always like to start with our guests is just kind of hearing a little bit about their background and, and their journey into education. So what's your story? Sure. Um, kind of went through high school. I have no idea what I wanted to do. I'm not real concerned about it. Just, you know, trying to make my B, B minus to keep my mom happy, that sort of thing. Um, senior year, we did this program uh, as part of the football team. We're on Fridays. We went and we read to, uh, to kids. Um, so every Friday, and you know, we'd be all suited up with our jersey on, shirt and tie, and we'd go and we'd uh, go and we'd read in Miss Garnett's second grade classroom. Um, for 30, 40 minutes, and then we go outside and throw football around with the boys, and uh, just like instantly, that just seemed like for the first time in my life, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. So, 17, figured it out, and never looked back. <laughs> and so, you've been in the third grade classroom the whole time, or have you bounced around, or? Yeah, so I um, took a long time to graduate college. Man, it took forever. But uh, when I did finally graduate, I taught for four years, in, or six years, six years in Battle Creek, Michigan, um, in a fourth grade classroom. And then two years ago in the summer, uh, Ms. Haney, my principal, now called and asked if I'd be interested in interviewing for a job. Um, it's actually the same elementary that I went to as a oh, kid. Cool. Same elementary that I went and visited those kids at. Um, and I can actually see my parents' house from my classroom. So. Wow, <laughs> that's cool. I've been in third grade for the last, I guess, year and a half um, in Parma. Yeah. Yeah, cool, very cool. So let's jump right into talking about Nerdy Book Club. Tell us more about that. Like, well, how did it come to be? What is it? Uh, how can people get involved? Those kinds of things. Sure. So um, Nerdy Book Club kind of started out as a hashtag. We're just joking around, like, brought three books to the dentist office, hashtag Nerdy Book Club, or, you know, uh, just like all these nerdy things that we did, you know, have 30 books on your nightstand, hashtag nerdy book club, and kind of started there, and then and there's this book called Hound Dog True by Linda Urban, and we wanted that to win an award, and we kind of figured that it probably wasn't going to win any major book awards, so we said, hey, let's just start our own award, and so we decided to start a blog, and we just called it Nerdy Book Club, and we figured, well, shoot, first day we announced that we were going to have an award, um, and then we were like, oh, well, we should probably do something on the blog in the meantime. So we just started having people post, make a reading life post, just to post anything about their reading life as a kid, as an adult. And, um, yeah, we started December 1st, 2011. We ran a post every single day since then. Wow, that's wow. really cool. Yeah. So is that a, so that's like a collaborative effort then? I mean, it's not just you posting stuff on there? Oh, heck no, I, I try to post as little as possible. If I'm on there, that means someone probably backed out or <laughs> at the last minute. Um, yeah, so we actually have a place on the blog. If you go to nerdybookclub.com, I think in the top right corner says, want to be a nerdy blogger, and then people sign up, and and we email them out. I email three or four of the days. Kathleen Sokolowski, she schedules three or four of the other days. Um, Cindy Minnick, she's in charge of the tech piece, so when we get the post from someone, we send it to her, and she puts it on the blog. Yeah. Very cool. And so it's just like people um, kind of promoting the books that they're reading, that kind of thing? Is that, is yeah, that right? so we have, yeah. you know, obviously seven days in a week. Monday we run those reading live posts, which are, like, I think those are kind of our, the, the heartbeat of the blog, just a post about someone who loves reading, just sharing a memory, sharing a story about their reading life. Tuesday we have an author on, um, an author post, and it, those are very similar to the to the Reading Lives post, but it's just an author instead of a teacher, librarian, principal. Wednesday, we do a new book review, any book in the last 18 months. Thursday is a retro review. Friday is a pay it forward, so something that you can use in your classroom, your library, or your school. 
Saturday's a top ten, and then Sunday's just kind of a potpourri, whatever we have, or we have an extra post, or we want to try something different. So Yeah, dude, that sounds amazing. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. So did that lead kind of into you creating Nerd Camp? Um, so, because... Yeah, so I um, had heard about the Ed Camp thing. Um, I went to the McCall conference, this giant tech conference we have in Michigan. And, um, Nick Provenzano and Aaron Klein were tweeting all this Ed Camp Detroit stuff, and I'm like, that sounds fun. So I really tried to go, but it didn't work out, and I said, shoot, I'll just start. We'll just start our own Ed Camp, and we'll throw it into with a literacy twist. So all the idea will be that we'll all come together to talk about stuff centered around literacy, and whatever we end up talking about just kind of happens, and but yeah, it just kind of started from there. And you know, first year, I think we had just under just about 200 people. Wow. You know, last year we we went to a day and a half. So now we have a half day. So people can travel into town um, day one, and we have scheduled sessions. And then day two, we have all day the Ed Camp model. And then we added last year two. We added well, we added a run, so we have 5K, and we also have. Um, Nerd Camp Junior, which is, that's my baby. That's my favorite thing I get to work on. So we have that in the evening where we bring the kids in. Oh, and very cool. They get, they get to hang out with some of the best writers in children's literature. So so when does that happen this year? July 6th and 7th. July 6th is our day one with scheduled sessions. Um, July 7th we have um, the, the Ed Camp during the day and then at the evening at Nerd Camp Junior. That See, that's it's one of those things that I've always wanted to go to, but I was like, ah, because it just sounds so cool. And I'm not even a literacy teacher, but just to be involved in those conversations and to talk about books is something that's so intriguing to me. Yeah, we have so many. I mean, and that starts, you know, as the or centered around literacy, but we have so many sessions that are not literacy based at all. I mean, we, have, you know, Brad Wilson does tech stuff there. Ben Rhymes is coming this year. Aaron Klein's comes. We have all these people in the tech world and. I feel like we have all these different worlds and all these different kind of bridges that keep us apart. So, you know, my big thing now is talking with Brad Wilson a lot. Just how can we get these things down? So, like, I'm not a literacy guy. You're not a tech guy. We're just, you know, teaching kids guys. So, right. We should come, man. We got, we got people. We opened up registration a week ago. We got 370 people from like Holy 15 smoke. states. From like 15 states registered. Yeah, That's man. Amazing. And we got a. Uh, it's free. Everything is free. It's totally nothing. And we even got the college, the local college, to let people stay in dorm rooms. So you can stay in a dorm room for like 14 bucks a night. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Man, it's gonna be great. Fun. Yeah, great job with that. What about uh, so so you you're one we consider like to be a connected educator. How'd your how'd your journey start into that whole um, realm? And so I went to uh, our Michigan Reading Association conference and. Now, I was the guy who always went to conferences whenever I could, but I always went with like headphones in my ear, hood up, head down, never talked to anybody, just went to the sessions, took my notes, and got out. And Troy Hicks was was leading a session. He's the I guess I would probably call him the biggest leader in digital literacy in the country. He was talking about Twitter, and I said I'll join. And my dog is beating up my cat. Goose. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and uh, I saw, you know, I instantly just followed like all the football players and all the basketball players, everyone from like my colleges I like and stuff like that. And then, and then eventually I started to follow like Donalyn Miller, who I started Nerdy Book Club with, and Frankie Siverson, a lot of the literacy people. And through a hashtag book a day, um, which is Donalyn Miller, she's ran it like seven years. In the summer, you just try to read a book a day and hashtag it, and we can all kind of follow our reading. That's where I just met everyone and. I guess the rest is, is history. Cool. So, Colby, if you weren't in education, what do you think you'd be doing? Well, the goal is to play for the Detroit Tigers, so um, maybe that would work. No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, I really I landscaped in college. Like I, um, like you know, planted trees and like designed people's stuff, like for a crew, and that was really fun. But I, know, I can't imagine not working with people. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't imagine not being a teacher. But yeah, that's scary. What do you think the most important quality is um, in a teacher? Like uh, something that they can possess, a character trait or an attribute? I think you know, just that you are a good listener. You know, everything is so fast. We have so much to do and so much to get done. And you just got to stop and listen because, man, these kids are going through some crap. And, like, if we don't listen and we don't try to understand them and see what they need, then we're never going to be able to teach them 
any of the content stuff we want to teach them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's hard, man. It's hard to slow down and listen. Like, I want to go, go, go. Do, 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 move, move, move. And everyone says, you know, take the first six weeks of school slow. And I'm like, come on, let's go. But, <laughs> and, that's, and that's when you're so motivated to go, go, go. Like but, right now, where everyone's like, It doesn't like, work. Ah. It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So, Colby, obviously, just like the rest of us, one of the things you hear about most from teachers is is motivating kids and finding what lights their fire. How do you motivate those kids in your class that may seem like the unmotivated children? Yeah, well, I guess I take that to how I try to motivate them as readers. And I think the biggest thing for me is is they see me as a reader. You know, there's I walk the walk. Can I read a thousand books a year? I, I, I know all the books, I know all the book trailers, we're, we're just surrounded in it, you know, we've had four, four author visits so far this year, we have two more, um, we, you know, I'm nerd camp, we have 27 authors coming in to, to Little Harmon, Michigan, and these kids are just immersed in it, and it's cool, you know, you make it cool, you make it fun, like, I feel like everybody, at, you know, at the end of the day will love to read, it's just, you know, the kids who don't love to read it either because, number one, they haven't found those books that they love, or it's because reading sucks to them. It means mom's mad at me because I'm not getting my reading stuff done, or I'm getting pulled out of class and I'm doing stuff. You know, reading. They just have all these negative things to read to reading. So I think we can just find the right books. Lots and lots and lots of books. And you know, I walk the walk. I'm a guy who reads, and you know, I'm proud to be in Nerdy Book Club, and we talk about that. So I think just walking the walk and trying to make things cool, and and understanding that you know some kids it's hard and we got to try to make it not hard, make it fun. It's just maybe a slippery slope here, this question. But what, I was thinking the same what, thing. <laughs> what's something you're reading right now? Like, or, let, let, okay, let's let's narrow this down. If you're reading a thousand <laughs> books a year, um, let's like education books. So some some great education books you've read over the last couple of years, and then maybe some non you know, non education stuff that you, you really enjoy. Sure. Um, I love Donald Miller who. I mean, we're friends with Southern Book but I think her books, Reading in the Wild and the book Whisper, just have changed education um, and changed the way we look at elementary, middle school reading, along with Nancy Atwell's The Reading Zone. I um, mean, in high school, um, Kelly Gallagher's Read Aside and Penny Kittle's Book Love, I think those, like, five or six books have totally, like, helped us all as teachers feel like it's okay to let kids read and just talk to them about their reading. Like, it helps us to know what we know and feel good about it. So I think those books are huge. Um, I'm reading Stephen Lane's Defending the Read Aloud right now. Um, so so that, that's a great one. I love reading aloud and to just to see like the value in that and to do it well, what that means. So I, I really like that. It's, so he's actually for the read aloud. Oh, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, cool. yeah. Yeah, um, I, let's I see. Non, that, it just came out. It just came out. Um, Non-teaching. I'm, well, I'm reading this book about the 3-5-3 defense because I coach 8th grade football. Oh, cool. That's that's very complicated, so I'm a little stressed out about that. Um, <laughs> we're switching defenses this year. Oh, hopefully no one from the around, like, yeah. you know, everyone has, like, public knowledge. <laughs> Never mind, we're sticking with Yeah, we're, 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 three, four, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I finished a book today called Lost in the Sun. It's by Lisa Graff. Um, she wrote A Tangle of Knots. And absolutely, almost. It's a middle grade book that comes out in May, and it's it's just beautiful. It's about this boy, and um, Grant is his name, and he he's playing hockey with his buddies, just like we all, you know, just play out on the pond. And he actually hits a puck, and it hits one of his friends in the head, and his friend actually dies, like falls over and dies. So he's trying to live with that and live with that grief. His parents are divorced. You know, he's he's a teen, just becoming a teenager, and his dad just had a baby with his new wife, and he's become really great friends with. Finally, found some girl he's kind of becoming friends with, but she's got this giant scar, like it like wraps all the way around her face. Nobody knows how she's got it, and it's it's just a beautiful, beautiful book. It's. I think it's one of those books like Wonder by Palacio. That's one of those books that when teachers read aloud, it's going to change the culture of the classroom. So let, let me just follow up back to the, I mean, a thousand books a year. Like when, what logistically, what does that look like? I mean, how often are you reading a day? And, and I mean, I mean, that's obviously your passion, and that's amazing. Yeah. That's very cool. Like what, what's it look like? Well, uh, I a lot of picture books, right? So I can knock <laughs> out, you know, it's only about three books a day. And I have four kids, so I'm reading a lot of my picture book reading. I'm reading with them. 
Yeah. And then just little spurts. I feel like I don't do anything more than 15 minutes at a time. I mean, I got four kids. Yeah. I got a job. My wife works as a teacher full time. So I feel like everything I do is in just like 15 minute chunks. So I'm just mm-hmm. always looking for those 15 minute chunks. And if I can read you, for an hour. Set a, yeah. Do you set aside time like where you like I'm like I, I get up early to read a little extra, or I or when I go to bed every night I'm reading that you're doing it then or? I'm always reading before I go to bed. Um, yeah. But we had another kid in Thanksgiving Day. We had our fourth kid, so there's not really any schedule right now. We're just in survival mode. So. Uh, okay, you're in, yeah, yeah. There's no schedule. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so, what about uh, Kindle or like print books? I mean, do you, do you have a preference over? Kindle I hate. Books yeah, I hate digital books. I hate them. Yeah. I I, I read uh, you know probably almost a thousand books last year, and I read one ebook, and it was only because. It was a good friend of mine, like my favorite author, and they sent me their book digitally, digitally before mm-hmm. it came out. Like, so I hate it. So I, what do you like with all these books? I mean, do you have like a little mini library at the house, and, and are you are you donating books? How how you handle books that you've that you've read? Well, uh, anything that can go to my third graders comes into the classroom. Cool. The picture book favorites stay in. Um, Stay the in the house, yeah. a lot of them, and then anything that's young adult that I've read and I'm done with. My wife has a library in her high school chemistry classroom, cool. So that they go to her. Any books that are too old for my kids, I send to the fifth grade teachers. I actually just dropped off like 60 books in the classroom earlier yeah. today. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. So, Colby, when you're having one of those days that you're just like checked out, it's been a rough day. What do you do to kind of help recenter yourself? Well, hopefully, I can read a book, right? <laughs> I, I love to work out. I love to go to the gym, do the elliptical, play some racquetball, go for a run. Um, that's my thing. Like, if I can do anything, if I can read and I can work out, it's a good day. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have time for my family. That always comes first. But if I can do those two things for myself, that's good. But it helps. You know, it helps that I don't golf, I don't bowl, I don't play softball anymore. Like, I read. That's it. Just it's, it worked out very well to where my passion fits my career. Right. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds very refreshing to me. <laughs> then, then you don't have to feel um, guilty. About, like, nobody feels guilty. Yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah I'm feeling guilty. <laughs> don't Man, you know, I tell you what, we did cut the cable last year, and that was uh, that was awesome. Thank God, yeah. it's gone. It's been it's been amazing. Yeah, it actually has uh, caused the caused me to get productive around the house and pick up the nice. guitar again and those kinds of things. So yeah, so I'm doing other things. What kind of music do you play? That's exciting. Oh, I'm just no, I'm just like strumming some chords, man. So do you have it in the Do you have it in the room right there? No, I know. No, it's actually in the next room. So and there's oh. no way in hell I'm playing on this. <laughs> Chris, Chris, I can take the next question. You can go grab the guitar. I would yeah, love. We no. can do like a we can like sing hell. and stuff. <laughs> I, I, I do sing to myself. That's it. There's no oh. way. My, not even my wife would hear that. So, Anyway, uh, on to the next subject. <laughs> what about uh, like the biggest thing you've learned over the last year? Over the last year? Oh, yeah. Um, we had this dude come into our school, like the beginning of the year, keynote guy, and he was awesome. And um, what he told us, it was he just basically shot down every negative thing that's been said about teachers and education, over that they, all those things we hear on the radio and the TV and in the newspapers. And he just talked about how they're not true, how America is the best education system in the world. And, mm-hmm. and but what he said, the biggest problem is, is we're not sharing our stories. You know, we're letting other people share our stories. We're letting the newspaper tell our stories. We're letting parents tell our stories, and who are the ones talking? Are the disgruntled parents? You know, we're letting the newspaper who, and their job is to sell newspapers. Like awful things about education sell newspapers. So, sure. I think that that's the biggest thing is to is to share our story, um, to share my story with my students and my classroom. We have a classroom Twitter account, we have a classroom blog, we have a classroom Facebook page. The kids do all that. Like you know, we use that Easy Blogger Junior app, and if this and that. So. You know, we have a blogger each day, and they're sending things out. We have it set up to where it goes to our district hashtag as well. So our superintendent's seeing it. Parents are seeing it. The county newspaper lady is seeing it. Yeah, so I, I think just – and then, like, other ways to get kids to share their stories whenever I can. I try to take kids with me to conferences to present with me or, or to have them have some sort of part in that because, you know, um, we took – Three of my kids last year to the state of Michigan board meeting, and they talked about the things we do in our classroom. I think anytime we can empower kids to share their story and to make them feel like they have an important story to tell, just I think that just changes the world for them. So that's been my big thing: is finding ways 
to get my eight-year-olds to share their story in our classroom, in our building, in our district, in our community, and in the world. So, so what do you see as probably the biggest challenge right now in your job? Um, I feel like we're forced to do a lot of testing that's worthless and that's that I'm not using to guide my practice. And I hate, I don't talk testing, I don't talk Common Core, like, that's for other people who are way more educated, but for the first time in my life, I feel like I'm being asked to give assessments, and I don't, I don't know why. Like, they're not replacing assessments, they're not driving my instruction, they're not used for my evaluation. I mean, I don't even know what the hell I'm giving these assessments for, and which makes it really tricky because I'm teaching in a building where my kids go to school. So, you know, I'm dealing with, like, do I make a statement? Do I pull my kids from the testing and say, like, they have better things to do with it? I don't know. I, I hate right. talking testing, but I really feel like I'm all about assessment and that driving what I do, but I just feel like we're continuing to get more assessments, and I'm still using the same assessments to drive my teaching. Right. So that, that's tricky. Mm -hmm. What about, like, if, if you could go back to your, see yourself as a first-year teacher, what advice would you give yourself? Oh, man. I would just say it's going gonna, it's gonna to be okay. Like, you, <laughs> you're going to survive. Um, you know, I guess one of the big things that I've really been thinking a lot about um, is just, it's just the whole technology piece. You know, when I started, we used to go to the computer lab every week, and it would be like, what are we going to do in the computer lab this week? And... Um, when I stop thinking about how I'm going to use technology and then it, technology where we just use things to help share our story or to help us enhance our learning, things really changed. Mm -hmm. So I would say don't stress out about tech. It's not about the technology. It's about the learning. Right. And when you look at the, the tools that we have, you know, it's not always going to be the iPad. You know, I got 10 iPads and 6 computers. It's not... That might not always be the best tool. And it might be you know, the flashiest or look the coolest if the principal or superintendent are walking by, but you know, sometimes a pencil and a paper or just getting in front and talking to the class, sometimes that's the best tool. So I think that would be the big thing. Like technology is, is gives us a lot of opportunities, but it's not about the technology, it's about the learning. What's something you're like really proud of accomplishing over your education career? Um I I love when when kids email me that I used to have, and it makes me proud when they when they ask me for book recommendations or they say, "Mr. Sharp, man, my teachers don't care about reading, and and I don't know. I just want to I just want it to be like fourth grade. I want like a good book to read. Can you can you help me out?" Mm -hmm. And that's been cool, especially since I switched districts. So you know, I'm not I don't even know how they're fine. I mean, Instagram's nuts, man. Like kids are nuts. Like they all follow me on Instagram. So, like, a lot of them have tracked me down that way. Um, but I think when a kid on his own time comes back and says something to you or compliments you or asks for a book, I think there's nothing more satisfying for you than that. Yeah, for sure. And I love Nerd Camp. I love, I'm very proud of Nerd Camp. <laughs> I was wondering if that's what you were going to say. <laughs> yeah. Well, Colby, one of the questions we always like to end on with our guests is what is something that you're really passionate about right now? That I'm really passionate. Oh man, um, my mind. I'm so focused on. Oh, I'm really excited about the state that I live in. Um, I feel like Michigan has got it going on. I feel like um, being a part of the Mish Ed, which is a little hashtag. I feel like that's a powerful thing, and I feel like we have some amazing innovators and leaders. Uh, Brad Wilson, Dream Mission on Twitter, I think is the most like. I don't like I. I feel like he is just the smartest man I've ever talked to when it comes to, to getting it. And um, he really changed my perspective a lot when I, I moved from my old district to my new district and um, was talking with Brad. And, and the thing that he said to me is, I want to have as big of an impact as I can have locally. Like, I want to make an impact right here. And then whatever happens, big big scheme of things, and nationally or statewide, that's that's fine. But I want to make sure that I'm focused on right here. Yeah, that's really profound. That's that's a cool way to look at things.
That's for sure. Because, you know, it's so easy. It's so easy to get caught up in the Twitter world. It's so easy to get caught up in the world where everybody thinks similar to the way that we think. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, it's about the kids in my classroom. Mm -hmm. So I am really love the state that I'm in. I think we're doing great things. And I think we doing a good job of putting kids first. Yeah, we've talked to a lot of great educators from Michigan. Yep. <laughs> seems like we've seems like we have one about every ten <laughs> ten episodes. <laughs> Something in the water in Michigan. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, I really do. I think that I think we got it going on. A lot to learn. But. Yeah. So, Todd, are you coming to Nerd Camp? I'm. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna be in California the week before that. So if I can get it back and make it work. I, um, I really, really, really want to, so i got to look at my calendar and try to make it work because it's, it's been on my mind several times the last week as I've, as I've seen Perneal share about it or Donna Lynn share about it. So We'll, we'll cover your registration. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Take care of that. Thanks, Cole. Yeah, Colby, it was really great to talk to you and get to connect with you. How can yeah. how can listeners connect with you uh, if you can blog or or, or yeah Colby, Colby Sharp on Twitter um, C O L B Y S H A R P Mr Colby Sharp dot com is my blog and then Nerdy Book Club is, is probably Twitter is the place to find me for sure yeah very cool so ways you can connect with us you can find us on Twitter at Edu All Stars H Q and our website is eduallstars dot com and you can find all the previous episodes we've done on Edu All Stars searching out Edu All Stars on iTunes with no spaces. And join us for our next episode as we interview the CEO and co-founder of Osmo. So thanks again, Colby, for coming on with us, and we will chat with you soon. Thanks, guys. Take care.